Earth, a planet we know so much and so little about at the same time. This huge six septillion kilogram stone became our little home in the vast universe. For us, this place is the most familiar and comfortable, and the fact that it's just a grain in a massive structure full of mysteries is mind-blowing. But is this the best thing that nature can create? Sextillions of extrasolar planets are sextillions of chances for the existence of a new and different world. But what is this world like? Is it similar to ours or perhaps different? Get ready for an exciting journey to the most breathtaking worlds in our universe, even some unbelievable worlds. Just imagine gigantic planets, some of them even more massive than their parent star. How big are they? Why are they like this? Or terrible exoplanets with extreme conditions where temperatures can rise up to 1,500 degrees Celsius. Or the very first planet in the universe that is almost 13 billion years old. What could have happened to it during all this time? And of course, some potentially livable planets with much better conditions than here on Earth. These planets are made for life. Just imagine what life could be like there. Worlds outside the solar system. Exoplanets find new ways to surprise us. Let's look at the interactive diagram. It highlights exoplanets in sound and light, starting chronologically from the first confirmed detection in 1992. The entire night sky is first shown compressed with the central band of our Milky Way galaxy making a giant U. Over the years, the number of points on the map has been growing, albeit very slowly. In 2000, scientists confirmed the existence of only 35 exoplanets. But now, there are more than 4,000. Astronomers made a breakthrough following NASA's launch of the Kepler and TESS space telescopes in 2009. They look for extrasolar worlds by the transit method, which records the change in a star's brightness when the planet passes in front of it. Among the transit worlds, there are very strange and mysterious ones. Do you want to know more about them? I'll tell you about a teenage planet and a chameleon planet. But we'll start with an amazing world that survived being side by side with a Death Star. WD 1856b from the Draco constellation has outgrown its star by far. Of course, stars are usually disproportionately larger compared to planets. For example, the Sun's radius is over a hundred times larger than that of Earth. For the exoplanet WD 1856b, which is 80 light years from Earth, quite the opposite is true. It's seven times larger than its white dwarf star. Imagine a volleyball orbiting a tennis ball. That's what this space couple would look like. In 2020, an international team of astronomers announced the discovery of the planet using the TESS and Spitzer space telescopes. It orbits the white dwarf WD1856 plus 534, which lies in the outer orbit of a trinary star system with two red dwarfs. A cold white dwarf emits almost no light making it difficult to detect celestial bodies nearby. In 2020, transit analysis showed that WD1856 plus 534 has a gas giant. It's roughly the size of Jupiter and is 14 times heavier. The giant moves literally side by side with its miniature host star. 
the distance between the star and the planet is about 3 million kilometers. Not surprisingly, WD1856b orbits the dwarf in just a day and a half, which is 60 times faster than Mercury orbits the Sun. About 10 billion years ago, it was a hot yellow dwarf like the Sun. Over billions of years of its evolution, the star has lost a significant part of its thermonuclear fuel. Then it grew thousands of times larger and turned into a colder red giant. As it grew, it had to swallow the nearby planets of its system. For another billion years, the outer layers of the giant evaporated into space. As a result, the star lost up to 80% of its mass. The remaining hot core is the white dwarf. Scientists believe that WD1856b was formed at least 50 times farther from its current location and was out of reach of its oversized star. But then how did WD1856b end up so close to its star? There are several hypotheses that can explain it. The most likely scenario proposes the existence of several Jupiter-sized gas giants near WD1856b. Their gravitational forces could have destabilized the planetary system and pushed WD1856b towards the star. Proponents of the second theory suggest that the fault is in the stars. As was mentioned before, there are two more red dwarfs apart from the white dwarf in this system. Perhaps their combined gravitational force changed the planet's orbit over time, pushing it toward its star. Perhaps a rogue star is at fault? Such space wanderers are not gravitationally bound to any galaxy and wander through alien worlds. If such an intruder destabilized the WD1856 system, the planet could have changed its orbit and ended up pushed close to a white dwarf. White dwarfs are dangerous because of the strong gravitational pull of super-dense nuclei. The sheer gravity of such a Death Star could rip apart celestial bodies nearby. What helped WD1856b avoid such a terrible death? Astronomers hope to find out after collecting and analyzing new data. The recently launched James Webb Telescope may reveal more about GJ1132b from the Vela constellation. The exoplanet managed to survive near the young hot star GJ1132. Just like a chameleon, the planet had to change its appearance to survive. What's more, this unique transformer resembles five celestial bodies of the solar system at once. GJ1132b lies 40 light years away from Earth. Early on, it resembled Neptune. Its diameter was several times bigger than that of the Earth back then, which means that it could be considered a sub-Neptune in terms of size. The gas planet was surrounded by a thick atmosphere rich in hydrogen and helium. Due to the intense radiation of a young star, it lost its atmosphere a few billion years down the road. The red dwarf has managed to strip its planet down to its bare core. Gradually, it became a super-Earth with 1.66 of Earth masses and a radius exceeding that of our planet by only 13%. In many respects, Earth and the exoplanet are quite similar. They both have the same density and are about 4.5 billion years old. Early on, 
they both had a hydrogen-rich atmosphere. They were hot before they cooled down. Astronomers go as far as to believe that GJ1132b and Earth have the same atmospheric pressure, but they are reluctant to call the exoplanet the Earth's twin. First of all, these worlds have been formed in a completely different way. Earth is not considered the surviving core of a sub-Neptune. In addition, our planet orbits its star at a comfortable distance, and the hot GJ1132b is very close to its red dwarf. Its orbiting period is only one and a half days. The exoplanet could have died from the heat of its hot star. Its dense atmosphere was what saved it. However, where did it get its new garments from? Scientists suggest that GJ1132b hid part of the hydrogen of the primary atmosphere in the hot mantle and magma. The gas is now being slowly released during volcanic activity, forming a new shell. This is the first time that scientists have discovered a planet with a supposedly secondary atmosphere. In addition, GJ1132b's surface is favorable for volcanic eruptions. It has no mountains apart from a hilly desert. Astronomers believe that the gravitational pull of some other planet in the system has split this desert into many small parts, making the exoplanet's surface closely resemble a cracked eggshell. It seems that gases constantly leak through these cracks and replenish the atmosphere. Almost the same thing happens on Jupiter's satellite Io, where volcanoes continuously erupt. This is due to the gravitational tug of war between Jupiter and its neighboring satellites. In terms of atmospheric composition, GJ1132b is also similar to another satellite of the solar system. It presumably contains hydrogen and methane, as well as an aerosol haze from hydrocarbons, similar to smog on Earth. This ghostly world is wrapped up in a thick smog. The foggy view of the planet can be compared to Saturn's satellite Titan. Scientists have already managed to look behind the smoky veil of this world, which is colder than GJ1132b. In 2005, NASA's Cassini spacecraft delivered a probe to this satellite, and it transmitted the real images of Titan. You can see them right now. Astronomers hope to venture new space missions in the future to peer through the fog of distant GJ1132b. Beta Pictoris is a star located 63 light years from Earth in the southern constellation Pictor. The star is hotter and more luminous than the sun. The bright white dwarf Beta Pictoris is very young and therefore incredibly hot. It is only 12 million years old. Compare it with the sun, for example, with its age of 4.6 billion years. The surface of the bright star is heated to 7,783 degrees Celsius, while the temperature of the sun is 5,505 degrees Celsius. Beta Pictoris can literally blind you, as it shines 8.7 times brighter than the sun. If the weather is good and the night sky is clear, you can see it with the naked eye. With a good eyesight, you can even observe the famous Beta Pictoris disk made of debris that might contain planets. Astronomers managed to capture images of the Beta Pictoris disk to see that it is warped. Look at one of them. Isn't it fascinating? Do you know that the colorful disk carries danger for our planet despite being so far away? 
it is believed that Beta Pictoris could send the interstellar meteorites into the solar system. Scientists discovered that the gas composition of the debris surrounding Beta Pictoris is rich in carbon and oxygen. It is similar to the solar system. The study of the disk may provide insight into the formation and early evolution of terrestrial planets. The Beta Pictoris is fascinating since it enables astronomers to observe a planetary system in the process of forming around its star. Let us visit two confirmed planets orbiting in the plane of the debris disk surrounding Beta Pictoris. One of them is the gas giant exoplanet Beta Pictoris b. It belongs to a class of gas giant exoplanets that are inferred to be physically similar to Jupiter. That is why they are called hot Jupiters. Beta Pictoris b's mass is 11 Jupiters, and it has 1.45 larger radius than Jupiter. Despite its huge size, Beta Pictoris b is hard to observe for astronomers. The planet is hiding behind a dense fog of disk. That is why Beta Pictoris b is very dim. It receives 10 times less light from its host star than the Earth does from the Sun. And yet, it was discovered by using the direct imaging technique, using reference star differential imaging on November 18th 2008 by Anne-Marie Lagrange using the NACO instrument on the Very Large Telescope at Cerro Paranal in northern Chile. The discovery image was taken in 2003, but the planet was not detected when the data were first reduced. A re-reduction of the data in 2008 using modern image processing tools revealed the faint point source now known to be a planet. Hopefully, we will discover many surprises about this system in the near future. The mysterious, huge gas planet keeps throwing riddles at scientists. They discovered that the temperature of the exoplanet is about 1,327 degrees Celsius. Some astronomers say that it is impossible. After all, Beta Pictoris b is far from its star and should not heat up like an oven. It is located 9.1 AU from its host star. It's like a distance from Saturn to the Sun. Other scientists theorize that the heat on the planet is preserved because of its huge mass and dusty atmosphere. It is already known for sure that Beta Pictoris b is a real super sprinter. If there were Olympic Games for exoplanets in the rotation category, it would win with a result of 8.1 hours. That is the time Beta Pictoris b takes to rotate around its axis. No wonder the day there is three times shorter than on Earth. I want to remind you that our Jupiter 2 would be a runner-up in the race. Its period of rotation around its axis is about 10 hours. When it comes to orbiting around the star, Beta Pictoris b is clearly in no hurry. It takes 21 years to complete one orbit of its star. In this respect, the exoplanet lags behind Jupiter, which orbits the Sun in 11.8 Earth years. The second planet in the system is Beta Pictoris c. It is nine times bigger than Jupiter, and its radius is 1.12 times wider. Despite its enormous size and mass, the planet played hide-and-seek with scientists for a long time. The story goes that astronomers did notice some hints of the planet's existence in infrared images in 2003, but they could not confirm it at the time. Only in 2009, they reprocessed the images with new technology and confirmed the existence of Beta Pictoris c. Why is the planet invisible? The answer to the questions is its super close proximity to the star. That is why the bright host star hides the planet in its radiance. The orbital period is 1200 days or 3.3 years. What is curious is that the Beta Pictoris c also has high luminosity. It emits six times more light than its neighbor planet. Comparing to Beta Pictoris b, the planet Beta Pictoris c is 3.5 times closer to the host star. 
However, scientists say that the luminosity of the two planets should be similar, given the small difference in their masses. One of the hypotheses claims that Beta Pictoris C is a teenager planet at the formation stage. If that is the case, then its high temperature that now reaches about 987 degrees Celsius will decrease over time. The star is estimated to be only about 20 million years old, so it's very young. We don't see the planet by reflected light like we do for our own planets, but instead by its own glow. It is all very cool. Let us make a space travel 850 light years from Earth. It is WASP-121b in the constellation Pupis. It is a huge gas planet. WASP-121b is a hot Jupiter exoplanet with a mass about 1.157 times and a radius about 1.74 times that of Jupiter. It orbits its host star WASP-121. It is a yellow dwarf similar to the Sun in mass and radius. However, the surface temperature of WASP-121 is at least a thousand degrees hotter than the Sun. The exoplanet is located, one might say, in the hot spot. It moves literally side by side with its luminary. A year on the exoplanet lasts only 1.3 days, as WASP-121b circles its host star in just 30 hours. That is 68 times faster than Mercury orbits the Sun. Because it is very close to the star, WASP-121b heats up to 2,000 degrees Celsius. However, it is an average statistic. To be more exact, we should mention that one hemisphere heats up to 3,000 degrees Celsius, while the other one is 1,000 degrees Celsius. Gravitational forces of the nearby star lock the planet. It does not rotate around its axis. That is why one hemisphere has an endless day, the other a perpetual night. As a result, the daytime hemisphere suffers from roasting heat while the night side is freezing. It sounds fantastic, but scientists found water on WASP-121b. Later, astronomers from the Max Planck Institute for Astronomy measured its atmospheric night side conditions by using the Hubble telescope. They discovered the presence of water and its amazing properties. They revealed that water circulation on WASP-121b has a completely different and weird cycle compared to the Earth. At about 3,000 degrees Celsius on the day side, the water begins to glow and many of the molecules even break down into their atomic components. The extreme temperature difference between hemispheres gives rise to strong winds that sweep around the entire planet from west to east, dragging the water molecules along. Eventually, they reach the night side. The lower temperatures allow the hydrogen and oxygen atoms to recombine, forming water vapor again before being blown back around to the day side as the cycle repeats. Temperatures on the planet never drop low enough for water clouds to form throughout the cycle, let alone rain. This planet never sees water precipitations. According to scientists, instead of water drops, it would rain rubies and sapphires there. Sounds like a fairy tale, right? Stretch your hand and catch a precious stone. In fact, it does not look like that at all. Clouds on WASP-121b mainly consist of metal particles of molten iron, magnesium, chromium, and vanadium. Temperature on the cold hemisphere allows particles to condense into the clouds and fall down in the form of rain. Aluminum and titanium were not detected in the atmosphere of WASP-121b. Scientists suggest that these metals condense and fall out in deeper layers of the atmosphere that are inaccessible to observation. There is no such rain in our solar system. 
As we know, aluminum condenses with oxygen to form the compound corundum. With impurities of chromium, iron, titanium, or vanadium, we know it as ruby or sapphire. It means that the dark hemisphere of WASP-121b can be filled with gemstones in liquid form. Liquid gems could therefore be raining on the nightside hemisphere of WASP-121b. Perhaps scientists will confirm the hypothesis of ruby and sapphire showers with the James Webb Next Generation Telescope in the future. The gas giant Tress 4 ab was discovered by scientists where it shouldn't be, in a binary star system. Without a doubt, the planet can be compared to hell. Perhaps it is even worse than hell. The planet is 1,600 light years away from Earth in the constellation Hercules. One of the stars in the system is a small red dwarf, dim and cold. Its temperature does not exceed 2,700 degrees Celsius. Even some of the exoplanets we know are hotter than that star. However, the gas giant we are talking about has nothing to do with the first star. Tress 4ab orbits a bright yellow dwarf, which is about 1.18 times more massive than the Sun. Its host star is a second in a binary system. Scientists did not expect to find any planets there because it is extremely rare for binary systems. Nevertheless, the planet Tress 4b was discovered by the Transatlantic Exoplanet Survey in 2006. Astronomers discovered it during transit. In other words, they observed its moving against the background of a star. Further research showed that the planet looks like a huge helium balloon. Its radius is 1.6 times that of Jupiter, and its mass is 0.8 times that of Jupiter. Such a ratio indicates an insanely low density of the giant, only about 0.33 grams per cubic centimeter. Compared to Tress 4 ab Jupiter is very tightly packed. Its density is as much as 1.33 grams per cubic centimeter. According to astronomers, it was the star that made Tress 4 ab fluffy and light. The exoplanet rotates shoulder to shoulder with the yellow dwarf. They are separated by a distance of only 0.05 astronomical units. It means that the exoplanet is seven times closer to the star than Mercury to the Sun. It celebrates New Year's every 3.5 days, making a complete tour around the host star. Proximity to the star heats the gas giant to a red-hot temperature of 1,500 degrees Celsius. Because of its low mass and heat, the planet's gravitation cannot hold the atmosphere and keeps expanding. As a result, the gas giant inflates like a balloon and its atmosphere escapes into space. It is dragging behind Tress 4 ab like a bright tail of a comet. Astronomers still must figure out the exact composition of the atmosphere. The further research is hard because of a dense, opaque haze in the upper layers of the giant. To solve the riddle, scientists turned to computer simulations. They look for an answer to a question. What gases in the atmosphere could explain low density and haze? By experiments and models, they found out it is a mixture of hydrogen, helium, and methane. These gases are lighter than air. As you know, helium is used to inflate balloons. The cocktail of three gases makes the planet literally weightless, and the methane covers it with a veil.
In addition, it turns out that Tress 4ab and other fluffy planets are very young. Their age does not exceed 500 million years. It means that the fluffy stage may only be a temporary stage in the development of these celestial bodies. At the end of their cosmic journey, they will probably become mini-Neptune. It is the most common type of exoplanet in our galaxy. Further studies of Tress 4ab and other exoplanets can either confirm or reject this hypothesis. Astronomers have high hopes for the James Webb Telescope because it has a high sensitivity to long infrared wavelengths. We hope that the telescope will allow astronomers to look through the dense clouds of Tress 4ab. It is even more challenging for astronomers to get behind the dense veil of clouds of WASP-76b from the constellation Pisces. Despite it, they have already managed to learn many interesting things about this gas giant, weighing slightly less than Jupiter. The planet was discovered in 2016. It is quite close to the Earth, almost next door to us by cosmic standards. It orbits the star WASP-76, 640 light-years from the Earth. The host star WASP-76 is a yellow-white dwarf that is 1.5 times more massive and 1.7 times larger than the Sun. The star is hotter than the Sun, with temperatures reaching about 6,000 degrees Celsius. A red-hot star makes the planet WASP-76b a living hell. Astronomers discovered WASP-76b in 2013. Scientific models show that all metals on the surface evaporate from the heat and turn into gases. After several years of studies with the VLT ground-based telescope, scientists had to revisit their initial claim. The conditions on the planet are hellish because it is much hotter than previously thought. High temperature generates terrible natural cataclysms. Let us share the good news that could make you happy if you were on WASP-76b. Because of its proximity to the host star, the planet takes only 1.8 Earth days to complete its orbit. So, you can celebrate the new year every other day. The bad news is that raindrops of molten iron would fall from the sky instead of fluffy snowflakes as we enjoy here on the Earth. Metal precipitations take place because the gas giant is too close to the star. The dwarf pulls the planet by its gravity with all its strength. Poor WASP-76b spends all its power to keep from falling on the star and disappearing into its red-hot abyss. That is why the gas giant doesn't have enough energy to rotate around its axis either. As a result, one side of the planet always faces the star while the other side is always in the dark. It is similar to how the moon is positioned in relation to the Earth. The temperature rises above 2,400 degrees Celsius on the daytime side of the exoplanet and only to 1,300 degrees Celsius on the night side. Using computer simulations, scientists found that the atmosphere of WASP-76b consists of a dense layer of clouds. Those clouds are very different from the clouds on Earth. Instead of water, the clouds on the exoplanet consist of aluminum, iron, and magnesium oxide. Later, astronomers found some ionized calcium too. The presence of large amounts of this substance could indicate strong winds in the atmosphere. Scientists suggest that the winds often develop into real hurricanes. There are no clouds on the daytime side, but the atmosphere is full of atomic iron vaporization. During hurricanes, these vapors are blown to the night side of the planet. 
There, they condense and form rain clouds of iron drops. No wonder that WASP-76b has iron rains. Astronomers are very curious and continue to study the properties of this incredible planet. Its proximity to Earth and large size make it easy to study. All new data will be used to explore new, perhaps more hospitable worlds. Meanwhile, a team of astronomers from the European Space Agency has found another hot gas giant with the help of the CHEOPS telescope. Scientists have never seen a celestial body so bizarrely shaped. Let's take a close look at it. The planet is 1.5 times heavier and larger in radius than Jupiter. It is WASP-103b in the constellation Hercules. It is located at 1.2 thousand light years from Earth. The planet orbits around the star WASP-103, a red-hot yellow dwarf. The temperature of the luminary is about 6,000 degrees Celsius, and its radius is 1.43 solar radiuses. The gas giant is very close to its host star. Firstly, the hot yellow dwarf heats up the planet to an unbelievable temperature of 2,234 degrees Celsius. Secondly, the hot yellow dwarf reshapes the planet. When we look at Earth, does it resemble a ball? The Earth looks like a sphere, evenly inflated at all sides. Almost all known planets also have a ball shape, not WASP-103b. It is a completely different matter. Look at a rugby ball, and it will help you imagine the shape of this gas giant. Why is it elongated? Because the proximity to the host star deforms and stretches by its powerful gravity. The planet is only 0.02 astronomical units away from the yellow dwarf. That is 19 times closer than Mercury to the sun. It makes a complete orbit in less than 22 hours. Well, we could celebrate the new year every day. Nevertheless, WASP-103b has nothing to celebrate. According to scientists, such a close distance to its host star is deadly. If a planet is huge, the proximity to the star gradually shortens its orbit. It means that WASP-103b would be approaching its yellow dwarf until it completely absorbs it. It may come as a surprise, but the planet has a good chance to escape fate. Astronomic models show that WASP-103b is slowly moving away from the luminary. Scientists suggest that the elliptical shape helps it to avoid the deadly pull from the host star. According to another hypothesis, somewhere nearby, there is a yet undiscovered faint companion star to WASP-103, and its gravity pulls the exoplanet away from the Death Star. To check their hypotheses and models, Astronomers need to conduct more observations of WASP-103b transits. Scientists plan to use the CHEOPS and James Webb Space Telescope to finally shed some light on the mystery. The story of its discovery took almost a decade and a half. It was a long process from timid speculation to confident confirmation. Let's go back to 1987. 1987, a team of British space explorers observes the globular cluster M4. 
It is a group of stars discovered back in 1746 by the Swiss astronomer Jean-Philippe de Chazé. The cluster is interesting by itself because of the fact that about 40,000 of its 100,000 stars are white dwarfs. It means the cluster is very old. Another big advantage for researchers is its location, that it is close to Earth. At the time of the observation in 1987, the distance was estimated at 5,600 light years. Later, it was corrected to 6,160 light years. In that year, the cluster presented more interesting discoveries when scientists discovered a pulsar and named it PSR B1620-26. At that time, it was a huge discovery because pulsars were rare finds. It was assumed that it was part of a double star system with a companion, a white dwarf. However, to positively confirm the presence of the white dwarf, scientists had to wait half the time of its assumed orbit. The team had to be patient for a full 200 days before they made an announcement. 1988. Confirmation is obtained. Yes, indeed, PSR. B1620-26 is a binary system with a pulsar and a white dwarf. Pulsars are rapidly rotating neutron stars that emit a highly focused beam of radio waves. When the star rotates, the beam goes over the Earth. It can be compared to a light beam from a lighthouse. Our radio telescopes detect a regular signal that appears to pulsate, thus the name pulsar. Pulsars are often poetically called beacons of the universe. 1992. Three groups of scientists from different observation centers detect an anomaly in the pulsar signal, indicating that it is gravitationally pulled by one or more invisible objects. A major conference on the topic of pulsars took place in 1992. Dr. Backer from the University of California, Berkeley, presented a paper and claimed that the anomaly detected by Pulsar could be a third object in the system. His colleague, Dr. Stein Sigurdsson, suggested that the third object may be a planet. He theorized further that it was not an ordinary planet. He called it a stolen one from the influence of another unknown star. 1993. The previous year's discoveries puzzled and mesmerized the scientific community so much that four scientific studies on the anomaly in PSR B1620-26 system were published in a year. Scientists have shown surprisingly vivid imagination by presenting a range of theories on the third object, from a black hole or a Saturn-like planet. Since then, every time a new theory emerged, the debate heated up even more. It took scientists 10 years to work through all imaginable and unimaginable theories on the anomaly in the PSR B1620-26 system. The final point in the discussion was put by the legendary Hubble Orbital Telescope. On July 10, 2003, Dr. Stein Sigurdsson triumphantly confirmed his hypothesis on the planet's existence. He also suggested an unofficial name of the planet, Methuselah, at the NASA press briefing. The news immediately attracted the attention of the world press for sensational reasons. The planet turned out to be not just ancient, but the oldest of all known exoplanets at the time. What does this wondrous ancient planet look like? It certainly has nothing in common with Earth. First of all, the very difference is that there are two suns. The star system PSR B1620-26 is located in the constellation Scorpio. The most interesting object in the system is the pulsar PSR B1620-26A. Its surface temperature is six times that of our sun, up to 30,000 Kelvin. Its mass is 35% larger than that of the Sun, but it is only a few kilometers in diameter, whereas the diameter of the Sun is 1.39 million kilometers. This ratio suggests an absolutely monstrous density of matter. 
one teaspoon of matter from this pulsar would weigh more than 100 million tons on Earth. And yet, the pulsar rotates at an enormous speed, making about 100 revolutions per second. During each revolution, it shoots out a powerful electromagnetic pulse toward Earth. Compared to the first, the second star of the system looks quite peaceful. It's a modest white dwarf with a mass just over one-third of the sun. It is an ordinary remnant of a sun-like star that has outlived its life. Our sun will meet the same fate in billions of years. The planet PSR B1620-26b was formed during the same period as its host star about 12.7 billion years ago. It makes that planet one of the oldest known extrasolar planets. In terms of size, the ancient planet can be compared to our Jupiter, only it is even 2.6 times more massive and 1.18 times larger. It revolves around a pair of stellar remnants at a fairly large distance, 23 astronomical units, or 3.4 billion kilometers. It is slightly more than the distance between Uranus and the Sun. Each revolution of the planet around the luminaries takes about 100 years. Let's go back in time to 12.7 billion years ago. The universe is very young. It is barely a billion years old. It is infancy by the space standards. The Milky Way galaxy is just beginning to form. No Earth, no Moon, not even the Sun existed back then. There is a sun-like star in one of the first formed corners of the universe, the globular star cluster. A Jupiter-like planet began to form around the star, which is yet to be born later in many billions of years. It was a momentous event for the universe in that space stretch because there were no more planets in the near or far corners. For the next 10 billion years, the planet quietly orbited its host star. Nothing interrupted or disturbed them in the cosmic dance. If only it were not for the direction they moved together. They went straight to the center of the star cluster. It was a real pandemonium of stars so crowded that they were a fraction of a light year apart. By comparison, the nearest star to us, Alpha Centauri, is four light years away. There, the stars were so close at light months or even weeks distance. The flight of the two could not last longer when the planet and its parent star passed dangerously close to a binary system consisting of an old neutron star and a white dwarf. Gravitational forces pulled the two systems together in tangled and unpredictable orbits. Soon, the planet's home star overpowered the low-mass white dwarf and ejected it with a gravitational loop out of the system. That is why the planet started to orbit around the remaining two stars, the parent star and the newcomer neutron star. The new, complex triple system bounced back off the ejected white dwarf like an ancient cannon bounces back when it fires a cannonball. The gravitational recoil sent the new binary system from the core of the globular cluster into the less dense region of the cluster, away from the center. Moved in the less crowded space region, the planet did not fear cataclysms for the next couple of billion years. However, dramatic events occur within the star system during that stretch of time. In its new position in the cluster, the planet slowly formed a wide orbit around the neutron star and its own parent star. The orbital radius is 23 astronomical units, roughly the same as Uranus when it orbits the Sun. From a relatively safe distance for the next billion years, the planet was to watch the slow death of its own home star. The Sun-like star finally aged and turned into a red giant a scenario that awaits our sun as well, except that the sun has no companion star. And here, all the matter of the star became a food for its neighbor, a neutron star with its voracious gravity. Eating its dying neighbor, 
the neutron star gained more and more momentum and spun faster and faster around its axis. Eventually, it turned into a pulsar with a huge speed of rotation around its axis, about 100 revolutions per second. By comparison, a hummingbird flaps its wings twice as slowly. Having finished its feast, the neutron star left only a small bright white dwarf with a helium core. All this time, our planet remained in its orbit. It remains there up to this day. Let's go to the planet that should not exist. Welcome to the planet of sinister space forces, the planet Poltergeist, or PSR B 1257 plus 12C. It is located about 2300 light years from the Sun in the Virgo constellation. It also has two neighboring planets. Over four times as massive as the Earth, Poltergeist circles the primary PSR 1257 plus 12 at a distance of 0.36 AU with an orbital period of approximately 66 days. Poltergeist has a name for supernatural beings that create physical disturbances. In German, it means noisy ghost. It is indeed a strange planet beyond explanation. It should not exist, yet it is there. The thing is that the primary star of PSR B1257 plus 12 is a pulsar. Pulsars are spherical, compact objects that are about the size of a large city, but contain more mass than the sun. They are formed by the collapse of giant stars and supernova explosions. As a result, everything in the star system is destroyed. It means no planets. But Poltergeist, against all odds, exists. It was one of the first planets ever discovered outside the solar system in 1992. Even its designation, PSR B 1257 plus 12C, is different and corresponds to the norms of those years. Curious astronomers began to look for an explanation and found a clue to solve Poltergeist's secret. It is quite simple. The exoplanet is not made of some mysterious matter. It is just a piece of space junk. After a supernova exploded, celestial bodies turned into space debris and formed planets of the second generation in the PSR B1257 plus 12 system like Poltergeist. It worked as a giant vacuum cleaner for space junk. It is smaller than the Earth, but four times heavier. Astronomers theorize that the exoplanet has a rocky surface suitable for walking, but do not get too excited to go for a walk after a long space journey. It is dangerous. The pulsar emits deadly beams of electromagnetic radiation. It bombards the planet, which makes it unsuitable for life. Perhaps zombies could exist in that creepy corner of the galaxy. Later, scientists changed their verdict and voiced an alternative opinion. They claim that despite all disadvantages, PSR B 1257 plus 12C and PSR B 1257 plus 12D could be potentially habitable. It is possible if they have a thick and dense atmosphere to keep heat, radiation, and wind from the pulsar off it would serve as an umbrella to protect the planet from deadly rays. Perhaps in such a case, there is even water on the surface. Who knows? Still, the radiation levels are much higher compared to the Earth and make it unsuitable for humans. But it is another story for simple protozoan organisms. Take, for example, the Deinococcus radioduran bacteria. Invisible to our eyes, the little organism can withstand radiation 500 times higher than humans. Perhaps it could survive on poltergeist. The same can be theorized about microscopic invertebrates, arthropods. Take, for example, water bears or tardigrada. They have amazing resistance to radiation. 
In 2007, they spent 10 days in an orbiting satellite without protection from direct solar radiation and a space temperature of minus 272 degrees Celsius, and 68% of the water bears survived. There is a good chance they could survive on the planet under a hostile pulsar. The exoplanet HD 80606b is in the Big Dipper constellation. It is 190 light years from Earth. If we were to land there, we would be caught in a hurricane much stronger than famous Jupiter storms. Severe storms are caused by the unique orbit of the exoplanet. HD 80606b is a gas giant like Jupiter, but four times bigger. It also has an elongated comet-like orbit. Its semi-major axis is 2.72 times the minor axis. A year on the planet lasts 111 Earth days. The maximum orbit distance to the star is 125 million kilometers, and the minimum is 4.5 million kilometers. It means that the planet comes 13 times closer to the star than Mercury to the Sun. If you could look above the gas clouds, you would have seen a star 30 times bigger than our sun. Welcome to the real hell. The primary star, HD 80606, is a yellow dwarf like the sun. It is a red-hot star with a temperature higher than 5,700 degrees Celsius. Even at the maximum distance, it heats the planet HD 80606b to 527 degrees Celsius. At its closest orbit, the temperature of the gas planet hits 1,227 degrees Celsius. With gravitational force, the primary star plays with the planet like with a stone in a sling. It takes six Earth hours for HD 80606 to cover this part of its elliptical orbit. Drastic temperature change and high rotation speed generate hurricanes that move from hot to cold hemispheres. Moreover, the HD 80606 rotation twists the winds into giant tornadoes. Wind speeds exceed four kilometers per second. For comparison, the speed of sound under normal conditions is 0.3 kilometers per second. On Jupiter, the wind speed does not exceed 0.5 kilometers per second. The only chance to survive on the planet is to use a heat-resistant spacesuit, but it would not hold in a storm. You would be blown into space like a grain of sand. There are models that show that gusts of 54 meters per second knock a man off his feet. When the exoplanet moves further from its star, the winds decrease and the temperature drops. Nevertheless, it remains one of the hottest exoplanets in the universe. Let us move on. Our next stop is the planet Kepler 10b in the Dragon constellation. The planet orbits 564 light years from Earth around the 12 billion year old yellow dwarf Kepler 10. Its mass is 0.89 solar. Its luminosity is similar to the sun. The radius of the planet Kepler 10b is 1.4 times that of Earth. However, it is 4.6 times heavier than the Earth. Scientists believe that Kepler 10b is the inner part of a dead gas giant. Basically, it is a charred iron core. Well, it can be described as a dumbbell, most likely made entirely of metal. It is very dangerous for space travelers. If you ever flew there, prepare for scary surprises. First, its freefall acceleration would feel very uncomfortable because it is twice that of Earth. Even astronauts are not trained for it. But let's imagine there is a special spacesuit and we managed to land on the surface of the planet. Here comes an unbelievable heat. Kepler-10 is 20 times closer to its primary than Mercury is to the Sun. It circles the dwarf star in just 20 hours. 
It is very close, believe me. It makes the exoplanet one of the most nightmarish places. The force of the star, that is, the effect of its gravity on the planet, is super strong. The dwarf holds Kepler 10b with one side toward itself. That part can be heated over 1500 degrees Celsius. All metals on the planet are liquid. Imagine that one side of Kepler 10b is a hot ocean of liquid iron, while the opposite side is cold rocks. That is not all. You should get ready for more surprises from the sinister Kepler 10b. For example, there are chemical acid clouds and billions of lightning bolts. Gravity, high temperature, and iron are dangerous to mix up. Up to a billion flashes light the sky on the planet every second. Unimaginable and scary. The highest registered number of lightning flashes on Earth is 50 per second. There is a hypothesis that intense lightning activity is caused by active volcanoes on Kepler 10b. They make the atmosphere electric. British scientists modeled several scenarios for the exoplanet based on the data obtained during the eruptions of the volcanoes Redut in Alaska in 2009 and Aisha Fjallajökull in Iceland in 2010. They suggest that more active volcanoes on Kepler 10b generate more lightning bolts. If you were there, you could observe up to 2 trillion flashes in two hours. If volcanic activity decreases, then the number of lightning flashes drops down as well. Scientists hope to confirm their theories by capturing the huge thunderstorm activity on Kepler 10b. It requires additional transit observations. If the lightning flashes are strong enough, we could see them by the James Webb Next Generation Orbiting Telescope. Planet GJ357D. First, we'll head to the bright red dwarf system called GJ357, lying in the Hydra constellation. In 2019, the TESS Orbiting Telescope discovered three small exoplanets there. GJ357D is the most distant of them and receives as much energy from the red dwarf as Mars from the Sun. According to scientists, it may be within the star's habitable zone, although this largely depends on the temperature of this exoplanet. Scorching hot or ice cold? The researchers found that GJ357D orbits very close to its star at a distance of about 30 million kilometers. The orbiting period takes 56 days. This is five times closer than from the Earth to the Sun. But then the exoplanet must be hotter than Mercury. It's twice as far from its star as the GJ357D. But still, its surface temperature reaches 427 degrees Celsius during the day. It's a kind of temperature capable of melting metals which of course renders these conditions unlivable. However, the opposite is true for the GJ357D. It revolves around a red dwarf, which is three times lighter than the sun and 40% colder. According to astronomers, the temperature on the planet should be minus 53 degrees Celsius because of this. Just try to imagine such a planet it would turn into an ice ball or a real snowball, unsuitable for life. But scientists consider the planet potentially habitable and hope to find a dense atmosphere there. Then enough heat would remain on GJ357D to ensure that liquid water is present. And this is one of the main criteria which makes a world habitable. Boundless oceans or rocky cliffs. The researchers also have to determine the planet's size and composition. GJ357D's location makes the task easier 
because it's only 31 light years away from us. To put this into perspective, the Sun is only millionths of a light year away from us. But by interstellar standards, GJ357D is literally around the corner, and it has already been found out that it's 6.1 times more massive than the Earth. This mass suggests that the exoplanet has a rocky surface. If that's true, it's about twice as big as our planet. But this place can be completely covered by the ocean. Astronomers are still trying to calculate what the size of such a water world would be. L98-59 system. Three exoplanets hugging a star. Meanwhile, we'll go a little further and visit the Volans constellation. There is an incredibly interesting L98-59 planetary system. It orbits a bright, cool red dwarf at a distance of 35 light years from Earth. A team of astronomers presented their research on the planetary system in 2021 in Astronomy and Astrophysics Journal. The story began in 2019 when the TESS Space Telescope detected three planets around the star, L98-59b, L98-59c, and L98-59d. All of them orbit so closely that they literally embrace the red dwarf. More precisely, they are 46, 33, and 21 times closer to it than the Earth is to the Sun. Their days can be counted by minutes, and the year lasts seven, four, and two Earth days. Radii of L98-59b, c, and d range from 0.8 to 1.6 of that of the Earth. Look at this illustration showing exoplanets compared to Mars and Earth. As you can see, the sizes of all celestial bodies aren't that different. According to experts, this makes exoplanets unlikely to be composed of ice or gas. In terms of their chemical composition, they should be rather similar to Earth. Light and soft. The scientists also calculated the planet's masses. One of them is light, almost like cotton candy. We are talking about L98-59b, which weighs 0.4 plus or minus 0.15 the mass of the Earth. It's about twice as light as Venus. All planets are also very loose. L98-59b's density is about 2.1 to 5 grams per centimeter cubed, and L98-59c has the density of 3.7 to 5.3 grams per centimeters cubed. The large iron core increases our planet's density as it constitutes about 30% of the globe's mass. Taking into account their density, L98-59b and c are likely to have small iron cores, making up about 12 to 14% of the planet's mass. Ocean Planet L98-59d is the third planet in this system and is strikingly different from its neighbors. With a density of 2.4 to 3.7 grams per centimeters cubed, up to 30% of its mass can be water. It's difficult for us to imagine such a huge ocean because water accounts for only 0.02% of the Earth's mass. Just imagine how big the ocean is out there. Of course, scientists can't guarantee that water makes up all the exoplanet's light matter. But this is most likely given that H2O is present in abundance in the universe. The fourth planet was hiding from telescopes. Furthermore, Astronomers announced the discovery of L98-59e, a fourth planet in the system. 
it's not transitive. That is, its orbit doesn't cross the line between the star and the observer. This is why the test telescope didn't detect it. It's already known that the planet's mass is 2.7 to 3.4 that of the Earth, and the year lasts 13 Earth days. A scorching foursome. So, it turns out that all four planets are terrestrial. Yet, they are absolutely unlivable. They are too hot, like Venus. Although their red dwarf is small and cold compared to the sun, these worlds are still too close to the star. The fifth planet is in the habitable zone but we are still looking for livable places in the constellation. Are there any such places in the L98-59 system? Scientists claim it's hard to know for sure. As of now, they have only found a hint of the fifth planet, a non-transiting planet weighing between 1.6 and 3.1 Earth masses. If it exists, it will be in the habitable zone. However, its orbit will also be unusually close to the star, and the year will last only 23 days. But this distance to the red dwarf is considered optimal. The fifth planet will not be too hot and not too cold to keep the water in a liquid state. Kepler 186f. The Earth's twin? The existence of a potentially habitable exoplanet in the Cygnus constellation has already been confirmed. It's located very far, around 500 light years away from Earth. This is Kepler 186f, which orbits the red dwarf Kepler 186 along with its four neighbors. Scientists discovered it back in 2014, and soon they began to call it the Earth's twin. And here's why. Both planets are the same size. Kepler 186f's radius is only 13% larger than Earth's. Like the Earth, the exoplanet is located in the habitable zone of its star. This means that it has the conditions needed to keep water in the liquid form. In its planet system, Kepler 186f is the farthest planet orbiting the red dwarf. But the planetary system is very small, so about 60 million kilometers separate the exoplanet from the star. It's the same distance as from Mercury to the Sun. Fortunately, as astronomers' calculations suggest, such proximity doesn't turn this world into a hot frying pan. The red dwarf is much smaller than the sun, and Kepler 186f takes 130 days to complete its orbit. As we mentioned before, such stars radiate less heat, so Kepler 186f is quite likely to have an Earth-like temperature. The exoplanet is also well lit, and thus can support life. The red dwarf is only 4% as luminous as the sun, but Kepler 186f is quite close to the star. It receives 32% of the amount of light that the Earth receives. That is, it's only slightly less illuminated than Mars. Imagine noon on Kepler 186f. It will be as light on the exoplanet as before the sunset on Earth. Or the Martian desert? However, not all scientists believe that this place is livable. The fact is that early on, red dwarfs usually emit a powerful stream of high-energy ultraviolet particles. Their impact may cause the planet to lose its primary atmosphere and become a deserted Mars twin. The axis tilt is what can bring us closer. Meanwhile, in 2020, 
Researchers at the Georgia Institute of Technology found another way in which Kepler-186f and Earth can be similar and differ from Mars. They found that the exoplanet's axial tilt changes very gradually, like Earth's. The fluctuation ranges from 22.1 to 24.5 degrees, reaching the maximum values once every 10,000 years. The stable tilt of the axis ensures a regular change of seasons, as well as an even distribution of heat and light. This doesn't happen with abrupt oscillations of the axis, as is the case with Mars. It's located in the habitable zone of the solar system, but has a very unstable axial tilt, from zero to 60 degrees. This may be the key reason why the Martian atmosphere collapsed and water evaporated from its surface. And yet, despite the apparent similarities, scientists are reluctant to call this exoplanet the Earth's twin. Its composition and density are still unknown, as well as whether it has an atmosphere. The mass is also unclear. It can vary from 0.32 of the Earth's mass, if the planet is entirely made of water and ice, to 3.77 if it's made of iron. And with Earth-like composition, Kepler-186f's mass will be equal to 1.44 of our planet. So far, NASA has compiled an interactive visualization of the alleged surface of this celestial body. Our first destination will be the planet that has become a symbolic starting point in the deliberate and successful search for Earth-like exoplanets. Discovering Kepler-22b was a historic event, to say the least. For the first time, mankind discovered a distant world that, based on a number of signs, could sustain life. The world media exploded with loud headlines about the discovery of a second Earth. But what exactly was this amazing discovery? The planet Kepler-22b was discovered by the Kepler telescope using the transit method. This is one of the most accessible methods for detecting exoplanets known to modern science. The principle lies in identifying regular drops in the observed brightness of a star when the planet passes along the star's hypothetical disk. This drop in brightness can be due to a number of reasons. So it took the telescope at least three dimming events at regular intervals to confirm that the planet exists. Finally, it was proved, and the research team announced the discovery of the exoplanet on December 5, 2011. The transit method, along with the data on the star Kepler-22 itself, gave enough information to gain a general idea as to what this mysterious world looks like. The star system is 620 light years away. The star is very similar to our sun, only is a little younger, 3% smaller, 2% less massive, and fainter in luminosity. At about 127.5 million kilometers, the planet Kepler-22b is closer by 15% to its parent star than our Earth is to the Sun. Thus, it finds itself in the so-called Goldilocks zone, or livable zone. This is the region of space that lies at the optimal distance from the star, where a planet can have liquid water. The latter condition is crucial in order for life to emerge. Of course, being in the livable zone is necessary, but it's not enough. Other factors also influence whether a planet is suitable for the emergence and maintenance of life, or at least hypothetical colonization. We currently have very little data on this. The planet's radius is about 2.4 times that of the Earth. As for the mass, there are only very rough estimates. According to some calculations, it weighs less than 36 Earth masses. According to others, less than 124. The chemical composition of the planet is virtually unknown, 
since the Kepler telescope doesn't have the appropriate equipment and we can only speculate about the composition of the atmosphere based on indirect evidence. This evidence allows us to assign the planet to the class of mini-Neptunes, planets that combine features of gas giants and rocky terrestrial planets. Natalie Battaglia, one of the researchers working on the Kepler Space Telescope project, looks on the bright side of Kepler 22b. She suggests that the planet can be mostly made of ocean, with all conditions needed for life to emerge. Some models suggest a lateral rotation of the planet, with each pole facing the sun for half of its 290-day orbital period. This could further contribute to a mild climate, as stellar energy would level out over time. Summing up all the available data, it can be argued that Kepler-22b can hypothetically really turn out to be an ocean planet with a comfortable temperature and all the conditions needed to sustain organic life. But in any case, this world would be hostile for a human, at the very least because of a powerful gravity. Nonetheless, Kepler-22b will continue to excite the minds of many space enthusiasts. Another discovery of the Kepler Space Observatory that stole the spotlight in the scientific community is the exoplanet Kepler 438b. It was discovered near a red dwarf in the Lyra constellation using the same transit method on January 6, 2015. The star system is almost 473 light years away. What makes this planet unique is that unlike Kepler 22b, it's much more Earth-like. What's more, it's almost identical to Earth, according to some sources. Its radius is about 1.12 of that of the Earth. The axis tilt is almost 90 degrees. The orbital period, on the other hand, is significantly different, as it takes only 35 days for the planet to make a complete revolution around its star. The mass is unknown for the same reason that we know little about the mass of Kepler-22b. However, there is some indirect evidence signifying the presence of a surface and its rocky texture. But one of the most important parameters of the planet is being located within the so-called livable zone. The parent star is half the size of our sun, half as massive, and much less luminous. But Kepler-438b is much closer to the star, which is suggested by a short orbital period, which is 10 times shorter than on Earth. The relationship between star luminosity and distance indicates that the planet receives just enough energy to potentially hold liquid water. Researchers were very excited about these facts and assigned this planet a high Earth similarity index of 0.88 according to the ESI classification. However, one needs to understand that rocky planets get a fairly high ESI index by default regardless of their location relative to the Goldilocks zone. For example, Mars has an index of 0.70, and Mercury, which is completely unsuitable for life, has an index of 0.60. On the other hand, Kepler-438b has the same high index of 0.88, according to the SPH classification, Standard Primary Habitability while Mars is frustratingly hopeless in this regard with an index of zero. The SPH index is a climatological measure of a planet's habitability based on the predicted or hypothetical data on the atmosphere temperature and humidity. Indeed, with such parameters, it could well be that long sought after Earth twin that all the ardent space romantics dream about. By the way, contrary to popular belief, the color of the sun on such a planet wouldn't appear red at all, despite the fact that the star is classified as a red dwarf. This name is very arbitrary, and for the naked eye, the local sun would appear only slightly yellower than the sun we see here.
However, further research and analysis of the data obtained by the Kepler Observatory led scientists to doubt the far-reaching conclusions about the planet's habitability. Astrophysicist David Armstrong and his colleagues from the University of Warwick in the UK found that Kepler-438b is regularly exposed to powerful radiation flows capable of depriving the planet of the atmosphere and creating dismal conditions for any living organisms. The fact is that its native star is very generous with power flares, which are much more intense than the strongest solar flares. But it's not the flares that directly affect the atmosphere, but the coronal mass ejections. These are massive ejections of gas and electromagnetic radiation from the stellar corona that significantly disturb the star's magnetic field. Armstrong believes that if Kepler-438b has the same magnetic field as Earth, it could be partially protected from the star's damaging activity. This would considerably increase the planet's chances of becoming a cradle for new life, but such data isn't within reach of modern science just yet. All the promising characteristics of exoplanets Kepler-22b and Kepler-438b aside, the distance of hundreds of light years is quite unsettling. Therefore, the discovery of planet Gliese 832c was a milestone event, as we are only 16 light years away from its native star. By space standards, this is very close. To put this into perspective, Alpha Centauri, the closest star system to Earth, is only 4 light years away. Gliese 832c was discovered in 2014 by an international team of astronomers led by Robert A. Wittenmeyer. Knowing all the critical data, the research team made the bold assumption that Gliese 832c was the next best candidate for a habitable world at the time. Indeed, the planet's parameters turned out to be quite encouraging. Not only is it in the habitable zone, but it's calculated that the amount of energy it receives from its star is roughly equivalent to what Earth receives from the Sun. The host star is a rather dim red dwarf, but the planet orbits at a close range, taking just 36 days to complete its orbiting period. Thanks to more advanced observation methods, it was possible to establish its more or less accurate mass, which turned out to be quite impressive about 5.4 Earth masses. The average temperature is estimated to be around 253 kelvins, or minus 20 degrees Celsius. This is just an average and very approximate estimate. Due to the orbit's significant eccentricity, the planet's temperature may fluctuate rather dramatically. Of course, despite the favorable location, we aren't still certain as for Gliese 832's habitability. Skeptics point out that the planet might have a very dense atmosphere because of high gravity, and this creates the conditions for a powerful greenhouse effect, similar to the one we observe on Venus with all the effects that render the planet unlivable. With this being said, the Venusian scenario is by no means a sentence, but merely an assumption. Another hypothesis postulates that the planet may well have a much more friendly atmosphere. But there can be another problem. There is a high chance the planet is tidally locked, meaning that one hemisphere is hot as it's constantly turned to the star, and the opposite side is shrouded in eternal darkness. But even in this case, the planet likely has a life strip between these two opposite extremes, an area where the average temperature is constantly around zero degrees Celsius may well pass along the twilight zone. And if the planet has a moderately dense atmosphere, this livable zone most probably extends to the dark side much further than the Terminator. The stable position of the tidal lock in its turn would certainly have another interesting effect. An invariable temperature difference between the dark and light side of the planet would form constant flows of atmospheric circulation. This is similar to planetary scale currents in the Earth's oceans. For example, 
the Gulf Stream determines a relatively temperate climate in the northern latitudes of the Earth. If it wasn't for the Gulf Stream, the British Isles would not be the foggy Albion they are now, but a cold desert, mostly covered with ice like Greenland. Similarly, constant air exchange could significantly expand the habitable zone on the planet Gliese 832c. Lying only 30 light years away from Earth, the mysterious Neptune-sized exoplanet Gliese 436b is emitting a huge comet-like hydrogen cloud dubbed Behemoth. It's about 50 times bigger than the parent star. Strong stellar radiation causes hydrogen to evaporate from the exoplanet. Such a large-scale phenomenon around any planet has never been observed before. Right next to it, there's a parent star, a faint red dwarf called Gliese 436. This is an M-type star. The planet has a mass of 22.1 Earth masses and takes 2.6 days to orbit its star which lies 0.0291 AU away from the exoplanet. Gliese 436b was discovered in August 2004 by R. Paul Butler and Jeffrey Marcy of the Carnegie Institution of Washington and UC Berkeley using the radial velocity method. In short, this method involves spectrometric measurement of a star's radial velocity. A star with a planetary system has a small orbit of its own, its movement being affected by the planet's gravitational pull. This in turn would change the speed at which the star moves towards and away from the Earth, that is, a change in the star's radial velocity relative to the Earth. The star's radial velocity can be calculated based on the shift in the spectral lines caused by the Doppler effect. On January 11, 2005, the planet was seen crossing its star's disk. But back then, this event didn't gain any attraction. In 2007, Michael Gallone of the University of Geneva in Switzerland and his team observed the transit of the exoplanet moving near the stellar disk relative to Earth. Transit observations enabled scientists to calculate Gliese 436b's exact mass and radius, which is almost equivalent to those of Neptune. The exoplanet's radius is approximately 37% of Jupiter's radius. But Gliese 436b stands out not only due to its massive size, the exoplanet's atmosphere is truly unique and full of mysteries. Studying this atmosphere is going to help scientists better understand the atmosphere of rocky planets in the future. When studying the Gliese 486 system and its planet in the Virgo constellation, scientists have proven that the hot planet Gliese 436b is methane-free using NASA's Spitzer Space Telescope. This contradicts standard planetary atmosphere models, showing that any world with the usual mixture of hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen, as well as up to 1,000 degree Kelvin temperature, should be rich in methane and poor in carbon monoxide. The exoplanet has a temperature of about 712 degrees Kelvin, so it was expected to have methane, but Spitzer's observations have proven that it's not the case. What puzzles scientists even more is that originally the planet formed as a gas giant and was much farther from the host star in the past. As Gliese 436b got closer to its star, the exoplanet was stripped of its hydrogen layer due to a process known as a coronal mass ejection. 
Further research revealed a thermochemical imbalance in the planet's atmosphere. It turned out that the methane content in the daytime atmosphere of Gliese 436b was over 7,000 times lower than the expected values and that it was surprisingly rich in carbon monoxide molecules. And here lies the second mystery. There shouldn't be so much carbon monoxide since its volume decreases when the temperature rises above a certain threshold. Carbon holds hydrogen at low temperatures. By contrast, it gives up hydrogen and takes oxygen from, say, water molecules to make carbon monoxide when it gets too hot. The nature of this amazing phenomenon hasn't been fully understood, just like the mystery of the missing methane. This still leaves astronomers scratching their heads, looking for the answer. So scientists realized that the planet was too small to be composed of mostly hydrogen gas like Jupiter. But at the same time, it wasn't compact enough to be a rocky super-Earth. They concluded that Gliese 436b could be composed primarily of an unusual form of water, namely ice solidified under pressure rather than temperature. Scientists claim that the water turned into exotic ice due to strong gravity and huge pressure inside. This can be probably explained by the planet's enormous gravity which is strong enough to compress minute amounts of water vapor in its atmosphere, preventing it from turning back into liquid. This strange, exotic form of ice is called Ice X. This ice cannot be held in hands or put in the mouth because it's so hot that it can literally burn any living thing. It's strange but it's not technically correct to call Gliese 436b a burning ice planet because, in fact, exotic ice doesn't burn. It's just hot ice, extremely hot ice. It turned out that a part of this planet is evaporating due to the parent star's pressure. Scientists believe that this planet either has a high cloud layer blocking the view or a cloudless atmosphere with a low hydrogen content, which makes it nothing like Neptune. Instead of hydrogen, it can contain relatively large amounts of heavier molecules such as water vapor, carbon monoxide, and carbon dioxide, which compress the atmosphere and make it difficult to detect any chemical features. Moving farther away from our planet, 41 light years away, we can see the exoplanet 55 Cancri E, otherwise known as Janssen. It orbits the Copernicus G type star. Its molten surface is completely uninhabitable. Above the burning horizon of Janssen, one can see Galileo, the exoplanet's parent star. It weighs 8.08 .08 Earth masses and has a radius of about 12,000 kilometers and an orbiting period of 17 hours, 41 minutes. The silicates in the atmosphere condense into clouds on the dark side of the tidally locked planet, reflecting the lava below. Astronomers discovered the planet in 2004 when studying the spectrum of its parent star, 55 Cancri A, one of two stars in a binary system in the Cancer constellation. Astronomers originally thought 55 Cancri E had an orbital period of 2.8 days, but 2011 measurements showed the planet was much closer to its parent star. Based on observations with the Canadian Most Space Telescope, scientists established an orbital period of just under 18 hours. 
The researchers estimate that the surface temperature of 55 Cancery E can reach 2,700 degrees Celsius. For some time, it was called the Diamond Planet because it was believed to be composed of diamonds and graphite. Although this theory hasn't been confirmed yet, the planet still remains an interesting subject of research due to its density and very close location to the parent star. So, according to the Combined Space Telescope data, the planet's radius is twice as big as that of the Earth, and it's eight times heavier than our planet, meaning that on average, it's less dense than the Earth. However, previously discovered diamond planets had a much higher density. Follow-up observations with the Spitzer Space Telescope in 2012 showed us that 55 Cancery E hides much more secrets and mysteries than we thought. While the planet was originally believed to be dense and rocky, Spitzer suggested that the planet contains a big part of light elements and compounds, such as water. However, according to the researchers, the planet's high surface temperatures contribute to the supercritical state of the liquid, meaning that there is almost no distinction between the liquid and gas phases. Supercritical fluids have an intermediate density between a liquid and a gas. Any substance at a temperature and pressure above certain threshold turns into a supercritical fluid. When a substance is in the supercritical state, it has intermediate properties between its gas and liquid phases. It has a high close to liquid density and low viscosity. Provided that there are no interface boundaries, the surface tension also disappears. To date, Janssen remains the only known exoplanet with these features. In 2012, a model of the planet's subsurface showed that 55 Cancery E is composed of carbon that mainly comes in the forms of diamonds and graphite, as well as iron, silicone, silicone carbide, and possibly silicates. However, a year later, it was found that the exoplanet has 25% more oxygen than carbon. Theoretically, 55 Cancery E can still be considered the diamond planet, since it has quite a lot of carbon left. But that's not the only thing that caught scientists' attention. What they are really trying to figure out is the strange history of how 55 Cancri E was formed. Scientists have already found explanations for high day and night temperature fluctuations on the planet. As it turns out, they are affected by the activity of volcanoes and liquid lava. Moreover, the atmosphere analysis indicates that the surface of the super-Earth is mostly comprised of helium and hydrogen, resembling a gas giant. Meanwhile, more than 137 light years from Earth, three teenage planets orbit a young star, TOI 2076, from the Boötes constellation. The star is only about 200 million years old, which is less than 5% of our star's age. Those newly discovered planets were detected by the TESS telescope as recently as 2021. Two teenage planets' outer worlds, TOI 2076C and D, are four times bigger than our planet and nearly 20 times heavier. Their orbiting period exceeds 17 days. TOI 2076B is the third star in the system and resembles Neptune. It weighs 10.8 Earths takes 10.4 days to complete its orbiting period and lies at a distance of 0.0631 AU from its star. The planet goes through an atypical transitional or juvenile phase of its life cycle, astronomers say. It's not newborn, but it's not mature either. 
studying the planets during this teenage stage will ultimately help understand older planets in other systems, as well as provide an insight into the history of the early solar system and the little studied planet evolution. Stay tuned for new fascinating facts about mysteries of the universe, stars, and planets. Let us know in the comments which one you think is the weirdest. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like this video so we can see how many space enthusiasts are out there.